Hello Life Church kids. It's time for another video lesson. I apologize that we haven't had uh, posted lessons for the last few weeks. We've had a few health problems, but we're back now and we're going to post. Guess what? Today is Sunday, May 31st. Next week, Sunday, June 7th, we are going to begin live children's church classes again. So invite your parents, come on and come with us and have live children's church again. Beg your parents, bug them, say, I want to go, I want to come, I want to come to church, I want to come to children's church. And we look forward to seeing you next Sunday, June 7th. We really look forward. Now, that's only in the 11 o'clock service. That would be only the 11 o'clock service. But we will be having live children's church once again. Now, on to our lesson today. Our lesson today is on Deborah and Barak. Back in the time of the Israelites, they didn't have a king to rule over them. God had given Israel their own territory. He gave them land, and the 12 tribes had each taken a bit of land and each of them settled in their land, but there was no king over the land. Instead, okay, so there was no king, but instead, God said, I'm going to appoint judges, and these judges are going to, uh, well, they're gonna act just like, kind of like the judges today. They still had no king, they had no rulers, they had no government, they had no police force or anything like that. The Bible says that everyone did what was right in their own eyes. But they did have judges. And if they had a problem, they would take it before the judges. And the judges would judge right from wrong. And that was the closest to a leader that they had at the time. And the judges would hear directly from God. They would pray to God. And they would, they would ask God, uh, what is it that they were supposed to judge? And... So the judges ruled over Israel. Now, not all the judges were good. Not all the judges were righteous. But they were in there for God's purpose. And one of the judges was a woman by the name of Deborah. Now, the thing I want you to know about Deborah. Yes, Deborah was a woman. And if you've been reading in the Bible, you'll see that a lot of the stories involve men. All the kings and it seems like just about everybody in the Bible is a man that, that has anything important to do. Does that mean that God doesn't like women? No, not at all. And here this proves that God will put his spirit upon a woman just like he does on a man. He doesn't care whether it's a man or a woman. He's just, he's just looking for somebody who's going to obey him. And by the way, since you are all younger, God doesn't care whether it's an older person or a younger person, even a child. God will use a boy or a girl. God will use. God will use whoever is willing. And at this point, uh, Deborah was the person that God chose to use. And she judged over Israel. And there was a, there was a, uh, uh, there was a, uh, another country, and uh, it was the, uh, the country is called Canaan. So this country was called Canaan. They were a people that lived in the land before Israel got there. And God had given Israel uh, instructions. When you go into the land, I want you to drive out the people that are already living there. They are under judgment from God. And God said, I'm going to punish them. And I'm going to wipe them off the face of the earth. And so they're... Uh, Israel's responsibility was to, to war against these people and to remove them from the land and to really remove them from the face of the earth. That was God's instructions because they were so wicked. And the land of Canaan, it was the Canaanites were one of the people that still were not uh, removed from the land. And so the, they had a strong army. And they were one of the toughest people, uh, and that's why they hadn't been removed from the land, because they were strong. And they captured Is the Israelites, and they ruled over them for a long time. And see, what would happen is that the children of Israel, would, when they were following God, they would prosper. And when they would fight in wars, they would win. And then they would get comfortable and they would forget about God, and they'd start serving the idols of the nations around them. 
And then God would have to judge them. God would have to allow another nation to come in and rule over them. And after a while, they would cry out to God again. God, we need your help. We need your help. We're sorry we did what we did, but we need your help. And God would raise a judge up, and a judge would come and help them. And Israel was under captivity from Canaan from this time. And they, they cried out to God, and God appointed this judge uh, by the name of Deborah, and he put his spirit in her. And Canaan had a, a captain by the name of Sisera. And he was a mighty, mighty warrior, Sisera was. And no, nobody could match him. Nobody could match his armies. He was the best army general there was out there. And God put it in the heart of Deborah that they need to raise up an army of Israel. And at the time, Barak was the captain over Israel. And she said to Barak, God is going to... Uh, God is going to give you the victory. You need to raise an army, and you need to go out and fight against the Canaanites, and God will give you the victory. And Barak said, I don't know about that. You know what? I will go, but you have to go with me. Now, why do you suppose he'd said that? You see, he wasn't confident in God. He didn't trust in God that God could use him. And he said, well, you know, Deborah is the judge and God's uh, anointing is on her. So if she goes with me, then we'll have the presence of God. But that's not how it works, you see. We each have the spirit of God within us. And God gives us instructions if we will obey him. And God will go with us. And some people say, well, I'm, I can't do it unless my mom and my dad go with me. If God's telling you, that means you need to do it. I can't go unless the pastor goes with me. God's spirit is not just on the pastor. His spirit is on you if you obey, if you obey God. And so Barak said, I will not go out unless you go with me. And Deborah said, very well, I will go with you. However, know this, that the credit for this military victory will not come to you. Instead, God's going to give the credit to a woman, and she will get all the credit for this. And I was okay with Barak. He didn't mind. And so he took his armies out against, uh, against Sisera and his armies. And Sisera and his armies were stronger and they had better equipment, and they had better training. But you see, Barak had one thing that Sisera didn't. He had God on his side. And God guided him, and God guided his armies. And the armies of the Canaanites were defeated before the armies of Israel. And the battle went very badly for the Canaanites. Why? Because God was with Israel. You see, it doesn't matter how big your opponent is. It doesn't matter how strong your opponent is. It doesn't matter how well-trained your opponent is. It doesn't matter how smart your opponent is. If God is with you, then God is mightier than your opponent. God is mightier than anybody that can come up against you. As long as you're following God and God is with you, you will win. You will be the victor. You will be. You will be uh, come out on top because God is with you. Now, does that mean that you did it because you were smart, because you were good? Because no, it's because God was with you. And Barak and his army, the Israelite army, went up against Sisera, and they should have lost, but they didn't. And the God confused the armies of Sisera. They were confused and they didn't know which way to turn. They all their training just went out the door because they didn't know which way to, they didn't know what to do. And Israel had a very great victory that day over the armies of Canaan. And Sisera, that brave, brave general that he was, well trained, had the best equipment, had the best training, had the best uh, military smarts, he had to turn and run for his life. And Barak pursued after him. And as Sisera was running, he came to this tent 
And it was a man that he knew. <clears throat> and uh, doesn't say the doesn't say the name of the man. But you see, the man he went to this tent of a man. And this man, although he was an Israelite, he was friends with the Canaanites. And he knew Sisera, and he was, he was friendly to Sisera. Which actually meant that he, although he was friendly to Sisera, that means he was doing it against God. But no matter. You see, because the man's wife, and again, they don't give them the man's name, but they do give his wife's name. Her name was J.L., And she recognized Sisera. And she said, come, come, come into my tent, come into my tent. And I will give you something to eat and I'll give you something to drink so that you can rest. And I'll cover you up, I'll hide you so that you can rest. And Sisera came in and he was so grateful. And she gave him something to eat, she gave him something to drink. And she said, here, you lie down here and I'll cover you up. And if they ask if, you are, if you're here, I'll tell them, well, you went on somewhere else. And he laid down and he fell into a deep sleep and then now it's time for God to act because while he was sleeping JL went and she got a steak not a steak that you eat but a S-T-A-K-E like a stick and she took the steak and she took a hammer and she put it down on his head now I won't go into the details. But let's say this, that Sisera was dead. She killed Sisera. And when the when uh, Barak and his armies came by, and she said, come in, come in. I know exactly who you're looking for. Come and see. And when they came in, there was Sisera dead on her floor. And God gave the victory to Israel. And it wasn't Barak that got the credit for the victory, but rather it was Jael. As God said, he said, I will give the credit to a woman. And he did. He gave the, all the credit to this battle went to Jael. She was the one that killed Sisera. Barak didn't do that. So now what does that mean? Does that mean that God likes us going to war, that God likes us going to battle, that God likes us killing people? No, no, it doesn't. But we got to do what we got to do. And... In this case, Israel had a instruction from God that they needed to drive them out. And that meant that they, that they had to fight a war. Sometimes you don't want to do that, but in this case, they had to. And God had determined that Sisera was going to be killed. Sisera needed to, to be killed because he had to be out of the way. And God delivered him into the hands of a woman because, because of Barak's unbelief. Now, here's the thing. God wants us to be believers. I'll say that again. God wants us to be believers. God wants us to believe him no matter what no matter what the circumstances look like no matter what it's no matter what it looks like to you god wants you to believe him he wants you to believe in him he wants you to obey him he wants you to be confident that you will go out and when God gives you instructions that you will go out and do it. Why? Because God is on your side. If God tells you to do it, then God is on your side. He will make sure that he brings his word to pass. That's what the Bible says. That He'll make sure God is not a liar. He doesn't tell lies. God doesn't make mistakes. And so when he tells you to do something, he's going to make sure that you're able to do it. And so God wants us to believe him. If we will believe him, 
God will use us in a mighty way. Now, that goes for adults, and that goes for children. That goes for men, for women, for boys, for girls. It doesn't matter. If you believe God, then God will use you to do mighty things. Why? Because it's not you. It's God. It's God doing the work. So God wants us to believe him, and God will get the credit. You see, that's one of our problems, is that we want to get the credit for things. Who did this? I did it. I did it. Look at me. I did it. I did it. I did it. Uh-uh. That's not how God wants. God wants us to, that whenever something good happens, we point to God and say it was by the goodness of God that this happened, that God was the one who made it happen. When we do that, we please him. When we make sure that we give all the credit up to God, God will be pleased with us. And he'll make sure that even if we go against people that are stronger than us, smarter than us, faster than us, better equipped than us, better trained than us, it doesn't matter. As long as God is with you, as long as you are walking in God's footsteps, you will have the victory. Just remember, first of all, and I, let me erase this and then we'll... two things that I want you to take out of this lesson. Put that there. Number one is this. Do not be afraid. If God is with you. Why? Because if God is with you, then God will do the fighting for you. And number two, when you get the victory, give the credit to God. When you do these things, God will lead you. When you do these things, God will go before you. When you do these things, God will make sure that you get the victory. And when you do these things, God will get all the credit for it. He'll lead you into mighty things, but don't you take the credit for it. You say it was God that did it. And God will be pleased with you, and God will use you. And he'll use you over and over and over and over again. Even at your young age, God will use you. I want to thank you for listening. Again, I apologize that I haven't been able to keep up with the videos, but we will resume doing the videos. We've got this video today, and we'll keep doing the videos because I know not everybody's going to be able to come to Children's Church, but we'll make sure that we continue to record the children's church lessons. But again, next Sunday, June 7th, come, come. From ages three to 12, we have children's church available for you. And come and take part in children's church. God bless you, and you have a blessed day in God. Father, we thank you for all your goodness. We thank you for all, all that you've done for us. I thank you, Lord, for this lesson of Barak and of Deborah, and I ask you that you would take it and put it in our hearts that we might draw upon it, that we might understand that when you go with us, that there's nothing we cannot do. And when you win the victory for us, that we give all the credit to you and to you alone. Father, I ask you to use us as we obey you to use us and help us to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.